OMG, I got aphids. As a grower tends to do, I was opening my tent for the day and taking a look over the garden. A gardener's shadow is a great form of IPM. I was around the fourth week of flower and things had been going pretty well. I had a couple Westport grape juices in here, a couple Kool-Aid mans, and a couple of the special OGs that I brought back from Amsterdam. The plants were nicely scrogged and filling up the full width of the 4x4 tent. Trichomes were starting to stack and a hint of purple was pulling back the veil of greenery. I leaned in closer to see what scents were already wafting from the swelling flowers. I touched a leaf and rubbed the trichomes between my fingers. Ah, this was heaven. But then I saw a leaf with a spot. It didn't look like a pest damage bot, but it was worth a closer look because it also didn't look nutrient related. I pulled out my trusty 1000 times microscope and in the proximity of that spot, I found this. That little mother I'm looking at the body, which is pear shaped and a soft body. I note that the bug has antennae, it's got big round eyes and the normal amount of legs. But do you see those two tailpipes coming out of its back? Those are actually called conicals. But putting all this together, I knew this was an aphid. What I found was a nymph, which means I likely caught the issue very early. You can see the size comparison between an adult and a group of nymphs. I continued to scout my plant like a man possessed, but I did not find any more that day. Here I am, four weeks from harvest with what could be the beginning of a potential problem. And you know, they always say never spray anything on your flowers and that's for good reason. So I continued to scout each night and by about the fourth or fifth day, I was starting to see little specks, which were those and nymphs on more of the leaves. Once you know what to see, you can't not help but find it. Some were stuck in trichomes, but what I was mainly seeing were the white exoskeletons. As aphids grow, they shed their skins, which I was seeing more and more of. And that's what you're seeing here in this picture. So what do you do? Number one. The first thing to do is if you have any other garden spaces or grow tents, inspect them closely and look for signs that these aphids may have spread there or maybe they originated there. I didn't see any signs, so that meant the aphid nymphs were confined to just that one tent. Immediately placing beneficial insects in the non-affected tents can protect them in case the problem spread over to them as well. You'd already kind of have an army waiting for them. Number two. Second is to only work or water in that infected tent after all of the other tents or grow spaces have been taken care of for the day. You don't want to go into that infected tent and do all your stuff and then go work in your other tents defoliating or water because you risk cross contamination. So make sure that the non infected tents, you do your watering, your deleafing, your feeding, anything you need to do for the day, do that first and then take care of the infected tent. Number three. Third, aphids suck on the leaves and drink the sap. So by defoliating, you can go in there, reduce their food source, but because they primarily live on leaves, usually the underside, by defoliating, you can quickly reduce their population without chemicals. So I went in there and gave her a good old stripping. As you can see here, there's a lot less surface for them to live, feed, and repopulate. 
I took note of the areas that had exoskeletons remaining and scouted daily to see if those numbers were increasing or remaining the same. I never really saw a congregation of adult aphids on the plant from the time of discovery all the way through the time of harvest. There was only one time where I saw a single leaf that looked like it had a little bit of a party going on. And this was it. You can see in this video an adult aphid is giving birth to a new generation of nymphs. Do you see the large one and the smaller ones? Aphids reproduce in numbers very quickly. Fun fact, aphids don't need males to reproduce and they're oftentimes born pregnant. Number four. Another option I had was to use one of the few sprays that are suggested for people to spray in flower on cannabis plants. I did buy one of these products. It was a suffocant, which is oil-based product, and basically you spray it on the pests or the plants, which the pests are on, and that oil coats them and suffocates them. The product that I picked up said safe to spray up until the last two weeks of flower. But I chickened out. Spraying anything on the flowers that you will be consuming just doesn't sit right in my head. Now, that doesn't mean that I wouldn't use it on the vegging plants, because I absolutely would. But I'm not going to spray it on a flowering plant that I'm going to combust and consume. That's my concern. I knew I had roughly three weeks to go until harvest, so I chose the method of cautious, consistent daily scouting and just waiting it out and getting through the hump. Number five. The important thing was for me to clean that tent thoroughly after harvest. Now, I also waited over three weeks before I put new plants in there, and that was to break the life cycle of the aphids. Because you've got to remember though, they need living plant tissue to survive. In the absence of that living plant tissue, they will die. But they might migrate to try to find another food source. So stay vigilant and don't forget those beneficial insects. Also, as you're cleaning your tent after harvest, be sure you remove all of the soil and plant material from the area immediately. You'll want to make sure that you clean and sterilize all of the tools you use during harvest before putting them back into their place or putting them anywhere else in the room. I usually just leave everything in that infected tent so I know everything that needs to be cleaned. For cleaning individually or separately, I used diluted bleach at a 20 to 1 ratio. 20 being the water, one part being the bleach. Uh, I also used alcohol-based wipes. Uh, those are very handy. And I also used trifecta crop control, which was a suffocant. And that just really made sure all of those surfaces, everything was going to be dead on it. And then I went back and cleaned it with some good old water. So that's what happened. Good scouting practices let me identify a problem before it actually became a problem. I was able to take steps to reduce the likelihood of an infestation and the crop turned out just fine. So is there anything that you would have done differently? What are some of the things that you have used in the past? And have you used anything during flower when you actually have flower formation? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. I'm sure other people would love to know. Let's learn together as a community. I appreciate you hanging out. If you do want to follow more of me and see more stuff like this, always the Chad Westport YouTube channel. You can also find me on Instagram, which is chad.westport. But I appreciate you hanging out, living through my horror of the aphids. Ah, it wasn't really that bad, but you never want to see stuff like that in your grow room. And I had to take the right steps to correct it. So until the next time, everybody remember to party on.